And so we'll go straight to Jeff Hansen, Managing Director of Sea Shepherd. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Welcome everyone here today. And uh, it, whether you're, you know, there may be some people here that are for the drum lines. There may be some people that are unsure. But, you know, let's not forget we're this massive people, group of people here today. And we have seen over the past in the history with Sea Shepherd, people that used to pull triggers on harpoon guns now come out in support of Sea Shepherd and the work we do. So it's all about education and awareness. Sharks globally are in big trouble. Not up to 90% of the world's shark populations are being wiped out through the ridiculous demand for shark fin soup and overfishing. 70, between 70 and 100 billion sharks are killed every year just for their fins. It's absolute insanity. Our oceans cannot sustain it. And places where sharks have been removed from our precious marine ecosystems have seen the complete collapse of fisheries or oxygen depleted dead zones. Western Australians, what we have here is rare and unique. And even our own WA Fisheries Department acknowledges this on their website. Despite their sometimes menacing appearance and reputation, <laughs> sharks seldom cause harm when interacting with humans. The presence of some shark species as apex predators occupy the very top level of a food web. The fact that they are here is a, actually an indication of a healthy, a healthy marine environment. Well, look what the Barnett government is making our fisheries department do right now off our beautiful coast. They are attacking our healthy marine environment. And I've heard people say, oh, you know, we, we don't need sharks, you know. Better those sharks get killed than us. The reality is there is no us without sharks. We need them. We need to give them the respect they deserve. A new report by, in 2012 by the Bond University for the fisheries stated that due to the environmental impacts of shark control activities, it is not, it is not recommended that either shark nets or drum lines be introduced into WA. Baited drum lines and shark nets do not guarantee, do not guarantee that beaches are free of sharks of a size or a species that pose a risk to humans. This is on our own WA Fisheries website, a commission report done from the Bond University. Once again, ignoring the science. And we've all heard about, well, it, it's in Queensland, it's been there for 50 years, yeah, well, we, it's not 1950. <laughs> this is 2014. And in Queensland, during the first 15 years of the shark control program, over 14,000 marine animals were caught in the nets and the drum lines. Over 14,000. And they were not sharks, other marine life. Between 1975 and 2001, almost 12,000 great white tiger sharks and bull sharks were killed. And 53,000 other marine animals were killed. Given that there could be as few as 3,000 great whites, what the Barnett government is doing is targeting a species and wiping it into extinction, and we must not forget, extinction is forever. The Liberal government is exempting itself from its own WA state counterpart and federal environmental laws. That these laws are intended to fulfil Australia's international obligations to protect biodiversity endangered species and migratory wildlife. They are exempting themselves from their own laws in order to kill protected species of sharks off our coast. Great whites have higher protection than our humpback whales. The <laughs> WA and federal governments, what they're doing is they're effectively giving other people out there that want to go and kill sharks, they feel like they're being given a green light to go out and target great whites and large tiger sharks. While Sea Shepherd is offering up a $10,000 reward for any information that comes to us that leads to the prosecution of people going out without exemptions and targeting great whites and tiger sharks. If you vote Liberal, you're voting for these drum lines. Contact your local members of Parliament. Tell them you don't want this. Write them a letter. Ring them up. Make sure that your voice is heard.
I was out last night with uh, my beautiful wife in Scarborough and just sitting there at night time looking out at the ocean thinking it just doesn't feel the same, does it? And the fact that there's, well, there's no people in the oceans at night and yet there's baited hooks targeting sharks. And we know tiger sharks are nocturnal hunters. So here they are swimming around the ocean. There's no people in them and yet we have baited hooks in there grabbing them and sharks need to swim in order to breathe. And that's why we've seen these beautiful sharks being brought up dead this morning. It's disgusting. And that beautiful tiger shark down, at, down south, off Meal Up Beach, another beautiful Australian place to be. She was a breeding age. She was over three metres long. She would have had pups every three years ranging between 20 and up to 80 pups which, pups which you know may or may not survive. She's out there every day maintaining the health and biodiversity of our oceans and this is how we treat her on Australia Day. It's disgusting. <laughs> Premier Barnett, if drum lines are so safe, if drum lines are not going to bring in sharks closer to our beaches, then why are you pulling them out for the rot nest swim? As many of our indigenous beautiful people of Australia know, we did not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. And what is the horrifying legacy we're leaving behind them? What is the point of bringing kids into this world without healthy, biodiverse oceans? Sea Shepherd has received many emails and letters from mums and dads and kids right across the world, even in the Galapagos Islands, where we work with the authorities. We work with the authorities to protect and patrol from the illegal poaching of sharks. Those kids and those people understand that no matter what happens, even if it is on the other side of the world, what happens in our oceans, no matter where it is, affects us all because we are all connected. And as we know, film and media over the years has had a lot to answer for for this hysteria about sharks. You know, sharks are labelled as monsters and there's an, a shark near our beach, terror on the coast. It's, and yet every photo with a, a beautiful great white shark is like this. I mean, do you ever stand there and pose for a photo and go, right, everyone, mouths open. <laughs> we need to show these animals for the beauty that they are out there swimming gracefully, streamlined unchanged for millions of years out there protecting the health of our oceans that we all rely on. And given the state of the world's oceans, if you want to see the most dangerous animal in terms of our oceans and in terms of our future on this planet, we only need to look in the mirror. What do you see when you look at those drum lines? A couple of red boys. I see something a little more different. To me it represents what our government is doing to our Great Barrier Reef, to our Tarkine, to our water supplies through coal seam gas, to sharks off the WA coast and therefore to our kids' future. They are stealing our kids' future away from us for any crime against nature is a direct crime against humanity. You know, I've heard people say, oh, if only they knew what they were doing back then, you know, when they were spraying DDT all over crops and when they were, you know, people smoking in the old days. While the future generations, we know what we're doing. Well, the governments know what we're doing. But well, we are here today to make a stand. And to those kids coming up, we will be remembered for people that made a stand. We were never under the illusion that this campaign was going to be easy. We were up against a very powerful government, economically and politically. They have the influence, they have the power, they have the money. They're an extremely arrogant government. Well, we have no choice. We have no choice but to take on the Barnett government. No matter how powerful they are, no matter how long this takes, for the alternative is to do nothing. And to do nothing would mean the complete destruction of our world's oceans. If we, if we want to get one message across here, is if we can't save the whales, the sharks, the turtles, 
the great white sharks, the tiger sharks, we're not going to save the oceans. And if the oceans die, we die. We don't live on this planet with a dead ocean. An ocean without sharks is a planet without people. No sharks, no oxygen, no civilization. It's as simple, it's as simple as that. So really, what this is about is protecting the future of humanity. And I think that's worth the sacrifices and consequences that need to be made in order to achieve that. What we have that the Barnett government does not have is passion. The passion for life. And the most important fight on this planet Earth is the, is the battle for life. One day we will look back at what this Barnett government is doing and we will look back at it with the same condemnation that we look back on whaling. But we are here today to make a stand. We are not separate from nature. We either choose to coexist with nature or we cease to exist as a civilization on this planet. And from, for the last words, I'll leave that to Gandhi. First they ignore you, then they ridicule you, then they fight you, and then you win. Thank you.